Retinal Rounds, episode number 52, No PVD Retinal Detachment. In this case, presented by guest surgeon Dr. Sarang Hansraj, a vitrectomy was performed to repair a retinal detachment not associated with a PVD. During the process of the vitrectomy, Dr. Hansraj encounters a highly adherent posterior hyaloid, making PVD induction and propagation challenging. Let's see how he manages this, and at the end of the case, we'll discuss some management options. Thanks, Dr. Hansraj, for sharing this case. Here's the patient's clinical history. He's a 68-year-old male who presented with gradual progressive decrease in vision in the left eye for two months. His vision in the affected eye was hand motions, and the left eye had a regmatogenous retinal detachment associated with an atrophic hole in the supranasal periphery. There's no PVD noted on examination, and the surgical plan was to perform a vitrectomy, laser, and gas implantation. Let's see how it goes. So here's the beginning of the case. Dr. Hansraj has already put in some trocars and is performing a core vitrectomy. You can see the uh, atrophic hole in the supranasal quadrant. And now he's going to be uh, inducing the PVD, first starting by staining the hyaloid face with some Kenalog. Uh, now using the cutter, you can see he's uh, aspirating uh, proximal to the optic nerve. And as he's trying to, uh, to lift up the PVD, it's just not coming. Uh, of course, the, the retina is detached in this location, so there's a lack of counter-traction here. Uh, further making this difficult. Now he's gone to the use of, looks like some ILM forceps and the soft tip cannula, uh, again, restaining with some Kenalog to try to see if there's an area where uh, the hyaloid can be engaged with any of these instruments. You can appreciate how difficult this is on detached retina. Now he's using a flex loop to try to brush up uh, the hyaloid proximal to the, uh, the optic nerve. And you can see uh, there's an iatrogenic retinal break uh, there in uh, roughly around the level of the equator nasally. So now the, uh, the hyaloid is elevated uh, more temporally uh, over detached macula. And here, uh, Dr. Hansraj is, is putting in some perfluoron to see if that might help to uh, dissect a plane uh, between the hyaloid uh, and the underlying retina. That doesn't seem to be working. Um, he's also going to use uh, some viscoelastic here to try to dissect some space. Um, you know, not a bad idea to try to hold the retina back during this process, but you do have to be careful, especially with the use of perfluoron, since the turbulence created can uh, cause little bubbles to form. And now uh, going back with the forceps, you can see he's now uh, peeling uh, the, uh, the hyaloid away from the optic nerve and finally has created a little bit of space. You know, the hyaloid is almost like a suction cup. Um, so as soon as you get some space between the hyaloid and the underlying retina, or in this case, the optic nerve, the fluidics can help to propagate uh, that, that uh, PVD and it can make it a whole lot easier. So now, finally, the PVD is up. He's debulking uh, the, the areas of the hyaloid that uh, he can and then is uh, propagating it further peripherally uh, and is now uh, able to perform uh, the shaving. So he's shaving here uh, proximal to the, uh, the atrophic hole. This is the causative break. And you can see that the, the vitreous is adherent in this location as well. So uh, clearly this patient has some abnormal uh, abnormalities of the vitreoretinal interface. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a risk that one takes when performing a vitrectomy uh, in non-PVD related uh, retinal detachments. But Dr. Hansraj is doing a great job of being very uh, meticulous lifting up the hyaloid, taking it up to the level um, of, the, of the vitreous base and, uh, and cleaning things thoroughly around the retinal break. Now you can see uh, things have been cleared and that really thick subretinal fluid that Schlieren is being um, aspirated, uh, performing a fluid-fluid exchange in this case. And now he's going back to work to, to elevate the hyaloid. It's important to do this. That Remember, there's an iatrogenic retinal break in this location, so he's going to want to make sure that all the hyaloid is off here. And you can see the break itself, uh, is the flap of the iatrogenic break is being, uh, is being trimmed uh, to, re to release any uh, uh, vitreous adhesions on the retinal break. Looks like there's some uh, bleeding that's occurred at the site of the, uh, of the retinotomy there with that iatrogenic break. And the air fluid exchange is being performed uh, to completely flatten the retina and then hemostasis can be achieved um, by um, aspirating that, uh, that blood and then applying some diathermy uh, to the source of bleeding. Now Dr. Hansraj is doing something uh, that's a little bit challenging, which is to perform a vitrectomy under air. You can see uh, the air interface of the vitreous base there, and he's uh, using the cutter uh, to go ahead and trim uh, the vitreous. You have to be very careful, of course, during these maneuvers. Scleral depression uh, can be helpful to better see uh, where the vitreous is located uh, while uh, trimming under, under air. Now laser is being performed to completely barricade uh, the uh, retinal breaks and um, the periphery is further inspected. 
and that's the end of the surgery. This patient received 14% uh, C3F8. Here are a few points regarding non-PVD associated retinal detachments. So when managing any patient with a retinal detachment, uh, their examination and surgical planning are critical. And Dr. Hans Raj in this case identified a supranasal atrophic hole and a chronic retinal detachment that was not associated with a PVD. In non-PVD associated eyes, I would highly recommend considering a scleral buckle. You know, scler scleral buckling in these cases has a very high success rate and it can help you to avoid some of the vitreoretinal interface abnormalities with a vitrectomy uh, as was demonstrated in this case. Now, Dr. Hansraj did an outstanding job of managing the situation. He stayed patient, used multiple techniques to try to induce the PVD. Uh, he stayed with Kenalog, he used the cutter, a soft tip cannula, forceps, uh, and that's what uh, ultimately worked. When using the cutter, remember to gather up as much of the vitreous in the cutter mouth as possible to increase the chance of inducing the PVD. In this particular case, Dr. Hansraj was contending with a detached underlying retina, and so uh, that lack of counter-traction can make a hyaloid induction uh, particularly challenging. Remember also when inducing the PVD to use a J-shaped maneuver as you're elevating up away from the optic nerve or the area around the optic nerve, which we've shown you in prior episodes. When that doesn't work, uh, in addition to the techniques demonstrated by Dr. Hansraj, you can also consider use of a pick or an MVR blade, which can help to incise uh, into the subhyloid space. And if you pair that with the uh, aspiration using the cutter, the incision allows for the BSS and the fluidics of the machine to hydrodissect the vitreous away from the underlying retina. And finally, whenever performing a vitrectomy for a retinal detachment, it's always important to thoroughly shave the vitreous around the retinal break, especially anteriorly proximal to the vitreous base, uh, which can contract and potentially reopen the break. In eyes where you're finding it difficult to uh, thoroughly clean the vitreous away from the break, on the, especially on the anterior side, consider placement of a scleral buckle. Um, while I generally favor placement of an encircling band, even a sponge in this quadrant could help to support the base uh, proximal to the, optic, uh, the atrophic hole as well as the iatrogenic retinal break. There's a lot to learn from this case. This, isn't, this is not an uncommon issue when performing a vitrectomy uh, in eyes that have a retinal detachment not associated with a PVD. And we really want to thank Dr. Hans Rach for sharing this case and for giving us an opportunity to learn. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.